Welcome to this short video on simplified pre-processing interfaces of Phoenix FEM. My name is Raja Nandraja, Director of Courses Provider, formerly a Geotechnical Professor at Johns Hopkins University. First a quick introduction to the simplified pre-processing interfaces. These interfaces allow you to conduct finite element analysis of certain simple problems simply by controlling the same set of parameters that we might be using in a simplified analysis of the same uh, problem. Let's consider the consolidation problem. Uh, typically, we use the Tesagi's um, consolidation theory um, for this problem. Now, we do that regardless of whether the problem is 2D or 3D. The parameters that go into the analysis typically include the coefficient of consolidation, uh, thickness of the clay layer, the nature of the boundary conditions, whether it's singly drained or doubly drained, uh, width of the footing, and so on. So simplified pre-processing interfaces would allow you to uh, carry out a finite element analysis of this problem simply by controlling these parameters, meaning coefficient of consolidation, etc. Instead of having to go through the pre-processing step by step as we would normally do in a standard pre-processing -pro pre approach. Uh, in a standard method, we would create a mesh, apply the boundary condition, define the material properties and so on. So we'd go through these steps. And sometimes it could be somewhat lengthy and also the process would be a lot easier if you already had a formal finite element uh, course. Um, so simplified pre-processing interfaces uh, allow you to uh, basically carry out a finite element analysis without having an in-depth background in the finite element method. Simplified pre-processing interfaces are problem specific. Let me illustrate the use of one of these for a soil consolidation problem. Let me click on this button here and this button here. As you can see, there's only one listed in this category for now. We're working on more, and you will see more of them listed in, in here in the near future. But for now, this is the only one that's available to you. Uh, to see the pictorial view of this problem, you click over here. So this is the simple consolidation problem that we will be discussing today in this video. Uh, basically, the pre-processing for this problem has already been completed. The data is available and you can bring it into the memory uh, by clicking on this item here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on this and you'll see a little blue bar at the top right corner and wait for that to disappear. And then a window will open like this and first you choose the directory uh, in which you want to you uh, store all the files and then give a uh, four letter name for the job. I'm going to choose an existing one. And it also tells you to save the problem one more time. You do that by going to this file pull down menu and clicking on the save button. Again, um, a blue bar appears on the right corner. Wait for that to disappear. Takes a few seconds. Now you can go forward and continue with the remaining steps. Just to see if the data has actually been brought in, you can go to the View pull-down menu and click on the Input Files. And all of the files associated with this problem would be listed here, all of the input files. So these are the files associated with this problem. Let's click on one of the, the one with an extension DAT and this file will open in the Microsoft Notepad. Obviously, you have to have uh, Notepad installed in your computer. And this is the primary uh, data file. Let's close that. And there are several uh, similar uh, input files, like the one with the extension CON is the connectivity file. 
and then you have the coordinate file, boundary conditions file, uh, bending element file, and so on. So let's close that. So now let's go forward with this forward navigation arrow. And you are in this sort of a main form. And this form uh, gives you options. You can either choose the simplified pre-processing interface or you can choose the generalized pre-processing interface, which is the standard um, method of pre-processing. But for now, we're going to click on the simplified pre-processing interface and it takes you to the simplified pre-processing interface for this simple consolidation problem. The simplified uh, pre-processing interface has a number of features and let's uh, talk about them briefly. First, uh, there is a graphical window on the upper right corner showing the mesh and uh, if you want to see the details a little bit more clearly, you could use the zoom in button uh, in order to do that. And then of course you can zoom out using this button right there. And there are some arrows uh, over here and they are used to change the size of the graphical window. Sometimes what happens is depending on the resolution of your computer screen, uh, what happens is the text and the button that you see on the left side sometimes sp spills over the graphical window, making it difficult to read. Uh, so if that happens, uh, you use the arrows in order to shrink like I'm doing right now. You can see the graphical window has been shrunk. Now next time when you save, the parameters associated with this modification will also be saved and you don't have to come back and do this again uh, for this computer. Uh, of course you see the pictorial definition of the problem like we have seen in one of the previous windows. And on the left side you see a bunch of button text boxes, pull down menus. Uh, you also see a uh, display box at the bottom. The display box basically summarizes everything that's currently in the memory. And then there are some uh, information uh, buttons at the, at the bottom. Uh, the buttons labeled H are what we call the help button. If you click on one of these, a small window will open, uh, giving you a brief description of the respective button. There is an Add Modify button. Once you make the modifications, uh, you would click on that first. And when you do, uh, the changes will be uh, registered locally first. And then you click on the Process button before you come out. And when you click on that, the data will be processed globally. And then you can come out and continue with the rest of the uh, steps. Let's go ahead and make some changes here. The width of the footing is 10 meters. Let's change that to 8 meters. Currently the footing is modeled as a flexible footing. Let's change that to a rigid footing. Click on the Add Modify button. You can see that the footing type has changed from flexible to rigid and then the width of the footing has changed from 10 meters to 8 meters over here. So the data has been registered locally. Now click on the process button and when you do you see a number of changes taking place right in front of your eyes. Basically it's incorporating the changes we have made on the simplified interface on a global level. It's basically going through the same steps that we would otherwise follow in the standard pre-processing uh, approach. Now it's telling you to save the problem one more time using the save button under the file pull down menu. And this is when it's actually generating the data files that are needed by the finite element software. Again wait for the blue bar to disappear. And then you can go backward using this button to this main form. It allows you to 
uh, execute the finite element software. So let's click on this and it takes you to the execute interface. Click on this button and click on this button. Uh, the MS DOS window opens and you type in the name of the job which in my case is TEM1 click enter answer a couple of other questions then the finite element calculations will begin and you see some numbers crawling on the window soon and you wait for for the execution to stop uh, before you can post process the uh, output. That's basically what I wanted to cover in this video and I would like you to view the video on post processing to learn how to post process the output data. Thank you for listening.